Welcome to 6502 Assembly Language Programming. In this video, we'll look at writing an integer multiply for the 6502. The 6502 does not feature a multiply instruction. If you need multiplication for your program, you have to do it in code. You are most likely already familiar with the algorithm that we're going to use. To illustrate, let's walk through a typical multiplication problem using the algorithm you were probably taught in elementary school. You start with the rightmost digit of the multiplier, and for each digit, you multiply that digit times the multiplicand, writing the results below the bar. So 1 times 25 is 25. When we get to the second digit of the multiplier, we shift our answer one place to the left because now we are multiplying by 20 rather than 2. Once we work through all the digits of the multiplier, we add all the partial products to get our final answer. This process works in the same way with binary multiplication, with the simplifying difference that the digits are limited to 0 or 1. So multiplying each digit of the multiplier by the multiplicand yields either 0 or the multiplicand. As with decimal arithmetic, you need to shift the partial product left for each digit we process. That is what our assembly language multiply algorithm will do. For our example, we'll code a 4-bit multiply routine. We chose 4 bits because the answer will fit into an 8-bit register. Extending this algorithm to 8 bits is an, a conceptual leap, but it's a bit messier. So here is our code. Now in our, um, our faux computer <laughs> that I'm providing for this slide, uh, I'm showing you the values of three variables. M1, which is the multiple CAND, M2, which is the multiplier, output, which is where we'll put our answer, X represents the X register, A the A register, and C the carry flag. The algorithm consists of a loop. Uh, processing will, will go uh, from loop down to iterate, where it'll decide if we need to continue or declare ourselves done. Okay, so the first thing we do is uh, is shift our multiplier one bit to the right into the carry flag and that's how we'll integrate interrogate each bit of the multiplier the carry flag is now one this instruction is branch on carry clear and so it'll take the branch if carry is zero but it'll drop through if it's one which is the case here. So here we're adding the multiplicand to our our output. So you see the um, and then we're storing that output. So you see the output changes to seven binary zero one one one. Now we're going to iterate our loop, but first we're going to shift our multiplicand left. Um, one bit. And now we're going to iterate our loop. Our X register is three uh, and not zero, so uh, that means we should continue the loop. We're shifting our multiple CAND uh, to the right one bit, um, pardon me, our multiplier, and this bit 
if you look at the carry flag is a zero. So we will take this branch here and not add the multiplicand uh, to our developing answer. We are going to shift the multiplicand uh, once again and iterate our loop. We're decrementing uh, the X register from three to two, which is not zero. So we'll continue to loop. And here we're we are uh, shifting another bit of the multiplier into the carry flag. This time it is one. So we will not take this branch. And now we'll clear carry in preparation for our add instruction here. And so we'll load our our multiplicand, add it to the output, and update output. So you can see the output has changed now. And now we'll iterate our loop again, uh, but first shifting our multiplicand left. Our X register is now down to one, so this will be our last iteration of our loop. We're shifting our multiplicand. Uh, we are taking this branch because uh, you see the carry flag is zero. And now we are terminating our loop. So we've exited the loop and now we can look at the output uh, to check our answer which is 23 hexadecimal, which is equal to 35 decimal, which is what you'd expect from multiplying five times seven. That concludes my walkthrough of my offered 6502 multiplication algorithm. Let's go to the IDE and create the same algorithm for eight bits. Here we are at the 8 bits and 1 byte website, ready to solve the exercise for this video. This exercise is relatively advanced and requires skills that you can learn in the videos entitled Shift and Rotate uh, Instructions and the Multibyte Shift. If you haven't watched these videos, you may want to do that now. Let's go ahead and navigate to the course code. And since I've been saving my work as I go along, the system offers me this link here that I'll click. And then the first thing I want to do is, is take a look at the uh, variable definitions in course.asm. Um, the Atari 2600 features a very small amount of memory. And so th the exercises that I provided use these variables here to do what they're doing. And it's generally not a great idea to add new ones. If, if you want to have variables that have different names, I would pick any one of these that's not, that um, may, perhaps is not a parameter and uh, rename it using the uh, set directive. In fact, that's what we'll do. So let's go to EX10, the source code for this exercise. And first of all, let's take note of our task, which is to multiply the 8-bit value in param 0 by the 8-bit value in param 1 and put the result in outward. Um, and uh, take note that uh, we're going to have a loop that runs through several times and the comment here recommends putting a weight sink in it. I'm not really going to explain that, but I'll put a link in the description uh, to the to um, an article that will explain the reasons why. Um, so for the moment, uh, our approach is going to be to take the 4-bit solution that we walked through already and extend it to 8 bits. So I'm going to go find my 4-bit solution. Um, oh, here we go. I, I have the source code set aside. 
So we're going to paste that in and retidy up the tabs just a little bit. Yeah, okay. So we're ready to go. And so the first thing we'll want to do is uh, provide for these variable names that we used in the solution uh, m2, m1, and uh, output. And so um, we're going to define um, m1 as um, as inward zero. And it's just a 16-bit variable that is available to us, so I'm using it. Then M2 is just going to be param underscore zero. And then output is going to be outward. So we're going to put output in, out, in output, which is outward, which is the right place for our answer. Okay, so off we go. The first thing we're going to do is um, is transfer the contents of param one to m one, and then extend that to sixteen bits, or rather initialize the upper byte of the 16 bits. We're also going to initialize our output to 16 bit value. So that's done. And we're going to set our loop counter to 8. Now M2 is a can function as an 8-bit variable. That works fine. We're just going to shift through all uh, eight bits, uh, shifting each low order bit as it comes up into the carry, and then reacting to that. For each one bit, we fall down here and add to the output. So, um, so here we're going to um, extend this addition here to a a um, 16-bit edition. Oops, oops, not there. Next line. By doing an LDA M1 plus 1 add with carry output plus 1 store A output plus 1. Okay. And now we have to change this shift here the shift left into a a 16-bit shift, so we're, that's easy to do. It turns out, we just do an ROL M1 plus one, and so this ASL instruction arithmetic shift left will shift the high order bit of M1 into the carry, and this R, ROL instruction rotate left will shift M1. Uh, plus one, uh, at the same time shifting the carry into the low order bit of M1 plus one. Okay, so beyond that, I think, uh, I think that is that. I think we might be done here. And I'm just going to put um, one last thing. I am going to put the weight sink. In our loop per the recommendation and okay let's give that a try see it compiles with no errors and let's see if we get a green light here and we do we do get a green light okay so we've successfully extended our 4-bit multiply routine to an 8-bit multiply routine and have solved the exercise for this video Thanks so very much for watching this video to the end. I really do appreciate it. And if you derive some benefit uh, from this video, please do click like and consider 
looking subscribe. Thank you so much and have a great day.